If you're interested in learning how to record in Logic and you're interested in how to record with an interface and with a mic or with a USB mic and you're interested in a Logic Pro recording template from a professional engineer, stay tuned because it's about to get good. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive in how to record vocals efficiently and effectively in Logic Pro and I'm going to show you all my settings. I'm going to show you how to do it with a USB mic, with an XLR mic. I'm excited about this. So let's open Logic right now. So once you open Logic, you're going to see this. This is what always happens right when you open it. You're going to click on audio. Don't worry about the inputs and outputs as of right now. Just hit create and all we're going to do is go to Logic and preferences and then advanced tools. So I just want to make sure that you guys all have your show advanced tools check mark. This is going to ensure that you have the full capabilities of Logic Pro and the amazing tools that it has to record and mix vocals. Now I must add that I believe that Logic Pro X is the greatest DAW for recording, mixing, and mastering vocals. Now I'm a music producer also, and I used to produce on Logic, but I actually produce on Ableton. I know that's kind of not about the topic of this video, but I just want to show you that I wholeheartedly believe Logic is the best for recording and mixing. You got these all checked. We're going to exit that. Now you're going to have one audio track and to simply put it, these are going to be where we record on. This is going to be the tracks right here. So we can hit this and it's going to duplicate every track. We're going to get rid of those for now. When you see this I button, this is where your plugins and your volume control is so you're gonna see this audio one this is right here we're gonna name this recording track this is gonna be where we're recording our vocal and then stereo out we're gonna name this the master chain and that's gonna be where we're doing the final mastering don't worry about that this is a recording video after this if you're interested in vocal mixing in logic pro I have a video specifically on that I will link that down below but you're gonna to want to know how to record and use it full capabilities first. So we got the track over here. This is where we insert audio effects. We can do channel EQ, you know, roll off some lows. We can add a compressor. And by the way, on our recording tracks, you're gonna wanna have them mono. So this little O right here means mono. When it's two, that means stereo. It's best to record in mono because you're one voice. One voice going directly down the center is perfect. Now the only time you would do stereo is when you have multiple singers on mic. So maybe one's a little pan to the left and then one's right but when you have one vocal recording that means it should be in mono I record in mono everybody records in mono that's the way to do it next thing I want to talk about is just the interface and stuff set up so most of you guys will probably have a Scarlett focus right interface now this is one of the best out there for beginners and intermediates and anybody really it sounds good it hooks up to a speaker what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need a a microphone so whatever microphone you have it's gonna have an XLR cable and you're gonna plug it into input one right here this is gonna be your mic and now if you see on logic you'll see this input one so that means the line from your mic goes directly in here to the input one directly to this channel and that's how you're able to record I always suggest having the gain right in the middle in order to make it work depending on the mic you have you're gonna hit 48 V okay you're gonna hit that little button that that's as simple as it gets. And then in the back, you're gonna have two aux cables like we have right here. And you're going to plug two of these, a left and right channel into these, into your speakers. And then you're going to use the USB cable that comes with the focus right. You're going to use the USB cable to plug into this into your computer. So let's plug in this focus right into the computer right now just to show you guys. We're not gonna use it because I'm recording a video right now, but I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna go to preferences audio, go to your output, and you're gonna see Scarlet Solo, whatever one you have, it's gonna be named on here. So you're gonna change the input and output to that exact interface. If you have a USB mic like this one right here, you're going to just directly plug this USB mic into your computer and you're gonna see it into your input and output. And you're gonna just change the input to your USB mic. Since you're recording, it's going in to Logic, but why would you put your output towards this mic? Is this a speaker? 
No. So your input is always going to be your mic if it's USB. Since we're using a Scarlett, we would change the input to Scarlett so it can hear my vocal. And then the output to whatever your speakers are. So if you're listening on headphones directly plugged into your computer like these, you're going to change the output to whatever your system is. So it could be your headphones. It could be your speakers. If it's your speakers with a um, interface, you're going to make the output to your Scarlett. So now that we have that set up, like I said, I can't change mine to that because I am recording a YouTube video right now. So right now, this thing right here is called the looping. I want to just throw in a beat in here first. So this is how I throw a beat. Let's do my one beat I just made right here. You're going to just drag your beat in there and you're going to want to make sure that it's on bar one, that it starts right there. Most of your guys' beats won't have the BPM or key, but it's kind of essential to set your BPM up here so that delays and everything will work at the same speed. Once I set the BPM right, it's going to be perfectly on beat. Let's say we don't know the BPM of the beat. All we're going to do is go on this audio effects. Actually, we're going to name this instrumental. You're going to drag your instrumental here and we're going to put a BPM meter. And this is going to tell us what the BPM is. 127. So all you do is double click on this 120, hit 127, boom. Now it's perfectly on beat. What I like doing is extending this loop bar and then on our recording track, you're going to hit R and now it's gonna be able to hear me. Unless you wanna hear yourself, I don't suggest anybody hearing themselves. If you really do wanna hear yourself, what I always tell people is just have one ear on, but I don't wanna hear myself because you're gonna hear double. So I turn volume all the way down. It's still gonna record, you're just not gonna hear it in the headphones, so that's why I like it. Let's say we don't wanna keep trying to start recording from the intro because it takes you know 10 seconds out of our day. So all you do is move this loop bar to maybe like a bar before it records, so it'd be like this. Baywood made it. Baywood made it. So we got our track right there. We recorded. Now I want to make you guys some audio tracks where you drag. Maybe your hook goes there, your verse goes there, ad libs, dubs. That's mainly what everybody records. I'm not a rapper or singer, so I'm not about to sit here and sing or rap because I can't. We're going to drag, let's say this is our hook. We're going to drag that there and then we're going to mix right here. Always just keep your recording track. I think it's easy just to keep one recording track right here to, you know, always down. And then all you got to do is, oh, let's say, all right, we got our hook. Let's go over here, hit R, hit this record button. So. Baywood made it. So now we got our verse. Let's say that's our verse. We're gonna drag this down, boom. And now we got our verse. And then we can just keep moving along and put our audio tracks where we want. And we have one audio track and then our hook, our verse, our ad libs and dubs. It, that's pretty much the basis of recording in Logic. You know, another thing I'll mention is that you should always just try to stay organized with your recording. Try not to delete stuff because you could go back and be like, I wish I had that one take. So just try to keep everything. One more thing is that I like having a level meter on my recording track as well. And I like to put it on RMS and then at negative 20. Whenever I'm recording vocals, turn up your gain on this, the gain knob, until it's hitting around negative 20. You see how my vocal is hitting around negative 20? That just means you're gonna get a nice, a full recording and that's just my rule of thumb it you could do you know negative 16 negative 24 I just found and I always teach that negative 20 RMS level is a great spot to be it's universally amazing to sit right there so that's another thing I'm gonna put on this track that's basically it and if you guys are you know need to find you have an instrumental and you need to find what the auto tune is for your vocal I have plenty of videos about that just check out my channel it really means the world to me if you guys subscribe because that means that I should be making more videos and keep putting out content and value driven content that will help you guys out there please hit that post notification bell so you get notified every time I drop a new video. I promise I listen to you guys on which videos you want. And then I ask if you guys could comment below what tutorial or video would you guys like to see from me next. That is all I have for today. Uh, I appreciate you guys for staying in tune and watching this video. If you wanna uh, build a relationship with me, hit me up on Instagram, at Baywood Vivo. DM me there, I always answer my DMs. And I will see you guys next video. Peace.